Hi everybody, Liz and Annie here again with another update for you. So we wanted to make a quick video to kind of amend something that we have said in previous videos now that everyone's getting into the swing of things this quarter and teaching's been underway for a couple of weeks. And that has to do with your options for closed captioning your lecture recordings that you're gonna post and make available to your students. Um, whether you are delivering that lecture content synchronously at the class meeting time or recording it previously and making it asynchronously available for them to look at any time through the course Blackboard, Blackboard site. Okay, so in an earlier video, we and some of our colleagues attempted to closed caption a Zoom meeting in real time because Zoom does have a feature where it will let you assign people to type and transcribe what's happening. Obviously, that's not a good solution, but Annie and I were experiencing whenever we were kind of trying to troubleshoot and test this out uh, in March uh, that Zoom cloud recordings would take a few days before they would generate all the files that you needed to have the closed captioning appear automatically embedded in your videos from your recorded meetings. So that's not an optional solution or certainly wouldn't be an optional, optimal, not optional solution. Thanks. Like, I was like, why is Andy looking at me funny? Oh, because I'm saying <laughs> random words. Um, optimal solution for you to like have your lectures and need to wait a couple of days before you could make them completely uh, available and usable for students who might need any kind of accommodation in your class. So we came down kind of hard on that. Um, we had at least one interval that was more than 72 hours before we had the necessary audio transcript file that Zoom generates when you're recording into the cloud that would allow that to happen. But since I've been teaching this quarter and I think Annie is maybe having a similar experience, um, I've noticed that the timing has gotten much better. So now usually, uh, within a half hour of me ending my class and quitting my Zoom session, I get a notification in my email, both that my video from my class is ready to share. And then a few minutes later, another notification saying that the audio transcript for that recording is ready, which means I can share the video link through Zoom's cloud recording that will have the closed captioning already like peppered into it. So I have my um my zoom account web page open over here now just so i can show you what that actually looks like so i'm signed into my account i'm under recordings here i have a bunch of stuff uh if i scroll up i have cloud recordings and local recordings so again locals to your hard drive or your machine that you're actually working on cloud is to zoom's cloud this is where i've been putting all of my course material which is why i have so many things here now and i can click on any of these to show you but i will click on the most recent one so a lecture that we had um in one of my classes earlier this week. And you can see now like all these files that I request for it to generate are showing up. So all five of the files that I, I asked it to give me in the Zoom settings that we've walked you through before show up here. So I have an audio transcript file that is completed. So I can show you what this looks like in the actual like lecture video content. Just a second. And just FYI, this is the version you that You should I be getting a little message confirming that you're okay with having the class recorded. Okay. One second. There we go. Couldn't pause it for a second. So this is the version that I end up sharing with my students. So they can also attend uh, synchronously and see this all happening in real time. For this one, I'm gonna jump to somewhere in the middle of the lecture instead of the preamble bit. And I'm gonna turn on over here because I have the audio transcript, I have this option here, the CC option where I can click on this and ask it to show sub show subtitles while it is playing the video. So I'm just gonna play a little bit so you can see that it's not that bad in terms of how accurately it's capturing what I'm saying on the lecture video, although it's not perfect. And we'll, we'll comment on that in just a second. I was uh, training. Uh, we were focusing on four questions that look very similar to the four that are highlighted here. So there's a reason for that. And the reason for one of the okay so that gives you an idea um my classes are 80 minutes long and so my videos that i've been posting for my students are usually about an hour and a half because they stick around for like 10 15 minutes at the end answer any questions that have come up in chat so it's a lot of content that they can go through um, but the closed captioning is pretty good so annie and i have both noticed in our classes and our recordings that there are some things that it really struggles with so Annie, do you have like uh, an example of like some of the stuff that it's? Uh... <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. So uh, often, if you're trying to talk about your TAs, your teaching assistants, it will mishear that as not an acronym, but a whole word of some kind. So it, it says cheese a lot. It'll caption it as cheese. 
<laughs> or other similar sounding words. It kind of seems kind of random about which one it picks, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Not so good with acronym things or with um, jargon sorts of words unique to your fields. Right. Um, but otherwise it does seem pretty okay. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of uh, potential things that it will glitch on. Right. So jargon or, or, uh, my particular way of speaking sometimes it'll like run words together in the transcript because it can't hear i'm not enunciating as clearly as it would like to pick it apart which that makes sense so the one thing to keep in mind is that it's probably still best practice to go through your your video make sure that there's nothing really weird in how it's auto transcribed things um, and save that for you and you can go in and edit that audio transcript file if you do need to make any changes so if you don't want it referring to like your TAs as cheese for the entire quarter, you can go in and change that. If there's a particular word that it hears as something different and it is potentially problematic to have it labeled in a different way than what you actually said or meant, you can go in and change it uh, to reflect what you actually said in your lecture too. Um, so in our classes, in our big site classes, often we could ask a TA to go do this work for us or I could actually run through my own lecture video and just kind of double check that there's nothing really strange. Um, if I needed to. And then uh, just for our UCR colleagues, I know there's another option that's become available to all of us in the last couple of weeks, and that is to, <coughs> excuse me, request that uh, Excite and the group that's working with the libraries um, help you do this closed captioning. So you can send your videos to them and I think they'll do that for you. Is that right, Annie? Um, I think so, but they do they have a time limit of 30 oh, like minutes the, the or did they take it off? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question, good point. So I don't think I could send them an almost two hour long video of my Zoom room and be like, there, have fun with that. They do want you to send them over digestible chunks that they can like crank through in a reasonable time frame. So uh, mm -hmm. we are making this just to amend the very strong stance that we took a few weeks ago that the Zoom cloud recording version of this would probably not be very useful for us in our teaching. It now seems like it's really good in terms of like how quickly it's doing it after you're done with your class. So I've been able to post all my stuff the same day of the lecture that takes place in the morning. So my students have had no problem. They've had no problem accessing these videos either. So anything else we should add here? Um, the last thing is if you, so I break up my lecture videos based on at certain points, just so they have several smaller videos to watch. And sometimes that seems to take the transcript service a little bit longer, but it's still within a day. So I can still get everything uploaded within a day. Um, but if you're doing something like that, where you have multiple videos that it's processing, it seems to slow down, um, but still not as bad as, you know, a few weeks ago. So um, just keep that in mind. You didn't lose anything. It just, it takes them a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yep. And uh, so this would be what we would now recommend that people do. This is probably the easiest way to get your stuff recorded and then available to your students with all the compliance issues pretty much accounted for. So, all right, good luck with this. If you haven't tried it out before and Annie and I will be back soon with a lot more how to's and updates based on all of the software updates that Zoom has been pushing because there's now a lot of stuff that's a little bit different. So we wanna make sure people are not caught unaware about what they need to maybe change in their settings. Okay, good luck with this, back later.